There's an email that went out this week, and so kids can log on. And, uh, and if you have not got the email, if you did not get the email, it's youth at thewellchurch.net. Youth at thewellchurch.net. Having a big Zoom meeting tonight. And uh, so we can uh, minister to the young people and just have a fireside chat. And I know that they're going to do a great job tonight, and that will be a blessing. How many hungry for the Word of God today? Let's get into this. Acts chapter 16. Now, we're going to hit something real hard today, and uh, I think it's going to be important for everybody. Just take some notes, because we're going to hit something really hard today. I was fired up about this message and uh, really excited about talking about it. Haven't talked about something like this in a little while. But today, the title of my, mes- my message is uh, Confronting the Python Spirit. Confronting the Python Spirit. Realize that when you're dealing in this world, and I've been talking about it, I said it, you know, when I preached the message on seen and unseen, you have to be able to see not only just the natural side of things, but the spiritual side of things. And the Holy Spirit comes into our lives to help us to see both, that we're effective. Jesus was effective because he understood both realms. He knew how to navigate through the natural realm, but it also was able to clearly see what was going on spiritually. And one of the things that we have to see is that when you're dealing with God, God, obviously, he releases his angels. The power of the Holy Spirit is moving. All those things are going forth. But there is a war that is happening in our midst. And it's been happening. This is an ancient war. This isn't something that just happened. This is an ancient war that is being going on. And, and, and we are in the middle of the war. Okay, Satan has his kingdom. He has his principalities and powers. He has um, all of his uh, demons that he has released to try to destroy humanity and to wreak havoc upon people. And these demons are disembodied spirits. They get into people and drive them and move them to do things that are detestable, not only just to other people, but also with themselves, because the ultimate thing is the devil wants to damage God's creation. He wants to make us look bad and then cause us to go down through the same path that he went down and then ultimately end up in the lake of fire. That's what the devil wants to do. And so we have to be able to see that. And people think it's like a joke, but it's not a joke, y'all. This is not a game. This is like, life is not like a joke. It's not a game. People are dying. Now, let me say this here. People are dying and going to hell for real. It's not a joke. It's not just some imaginary place. It's the reality. When you read this Bible and you understand that, that hell is real, just the same way that heaven is real. It's amazing how everybody wants to believe in heaven, but nobody wants to believe in hell. But the Bible talks about both and gives us great clarity into what happens. Well, these demons, their desire is for us to go to the lake of fire. Their their desire is to take us down the same path and destiny that they're they're destined to. Well, our job as a church is, is, is our job is to expose it, help people to have clarity, get delivered, get free, and then walk in their God given right of freedom and liberty that Jesus paid to give them. And so we don't play around. We don't play around with with stuff. We have to understand this is serious. Um, You can play play sports, and you can play basketball, and you can play football, but you don't play play God. This isn't a joke. And so we want to be very, very serious about what we're doing. And the Bible gives us great clarity on stuff. And so today, we're going to expose this spirit once again and then talk about how this spirit operates and then help us to make sure that we don't get trapped by this python spirit. You look here in Acts chapter 16, and we're, and we're going to look at verse 6 on down to 10, and then we're going to skip to verses 16 on down to 18, okay? The Apostle Paul, uh, Timothy, and Silas on an apostolic mission, and they're going forth to visit the churches that they've already established and then, and then encourage them and be a blessing. And as they're on their way, uh, we pick it up here. It says, now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, did not permit them. 
So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Then we skip down to verse 16. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days, but Paul, Greatly annoyed, now watch that, y'all. Greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. I want to stop right there. After this happens, the, the masters of that lady who was possessed with this evil spirit, when they found out that their gain was lost because she didn't have the ability to, to um, release the, uh, the divining power that she had, um, they got upset, and then they arrested them, threw them in the prison. Then they get in the prison, they start to praise God, and then God delivers them. I mean, this whole chapter is beautiful. I encourage you to read the whole chapter. It's a powerful, powerful chapter. But a couple things that I want you to see here. This word here, she had a spirit of divination. This word here in the Greek is the Greek word, Python, Python, Python. It is actually Pytho, but it came to mean Python, came to be changed to Python. Uh, the name then became the surname of Apollo, the god of divination in Greek mytho mythology, and hence applied to all oracular and div divinatory spirits, okay? divinatory spirits and hence applied to all oracular or divinatory spirits um, in Acts chapter 16 verse 16 it speaks of Paul meeting and subsequently exercising such a spirit of divination from a young woman at Philippi to divine this word means to divine suse but is never used of true inspiration or prophetic utterances. Okay, this word means to divine or soothsay, but never used of true inspiration or prophetic utterance. Now, the thing that is so powerful about this word is that when you look at the, this Greek word, python or pytho, it, it's a, a python is a constrictor. And when you look at what pythons do in the natural, the snake, a python, what they do is they constrict and their desire is to take the pneuma or the breath out of its prey. And this is the thing that happens for individuals and for churches is that this spirit will get into a church, it'll get into a person's life, and its job is to come around a person and constrict them so that the pneuma or the spirit of God, the Greek word for spirit is the word pneuma. It is the breath of God to suck the breath and life out of its prey, and this is what it does within a local church, this is what it does in a person's life. This spirit comes in and it is a constrictor. It wants to rob the people of God from experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't mean that the, the church or the person will stop being a Christian or stop you know, being around religious things. It just means that, that no longer is the Holy Spirit or does he have the, the, um, the free course within your life and in your church. And this is something we have to be very, very cautious about because these, this spirit of divination is also a religious spirit in nature. But the thing that it wants to do is rob the influence of the Holy Spirit from being expressed and flow within the context of a local church and in your personal life, in your home, in your marriage, 
in, 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 your, in your business. He wants to take the Spirit of God out, but then he wants to replace him with his presence there, with the python spirit's presence there. And so we have to be very, very careful when it comes to this and understand that the Holy Spirit, he wants to come into our lives. He wants to breathe upon us. He wants to move upon us. He wants to give us inspiration and revelation. He wants to move through us, speak through us. But you watch it, the enemy will come in and he will try to displace and replace the Holy Spirit with a bad spirit, a religious spirit, a python spirit. And he wants to squeeze on you to the point where the Holy Spirit is removed and then now he comes in. And he'll, the, this spirit will start talking to you and telling you things and saying things that are true to a point, but it's the wrong spirit. The Apostle Paul, he's here with Silas. And as they're going forth, also with Timothy, that says in verse 16, now what happened as we went to prayer that a, a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. So we see fortune telling, we see soothsaying, we see uh, spirit of divination, we see a bad spirit. But saints, understand this. This is the first point. Number one, this spirit is always attracted to prayer. They were going to prayer, and as they were going to prayer, here comes this person who is coming to prayer, but they have a bad spirit. And so we have to realize that the, 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 the attraction to prayer is not so that so that, that you can join and be into it. It's so that you can come and then displace and replace the flowing of the Holy Spirit with a bad spirit. And this is what happens. They were going to prayer and they're attracted. And I see this happen a lot of times. People that believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, believe in prayer, believe in the prophetic. These spirits will try to come along and get connected to these people to try to get them deceived and so that they, it sucks the spirit of God out and then replaces with this bad spirit. And then the church is still going on, the ministry is still going on, and the person is still praying, but they don't have the right spirit operating and functioning in their life. And you see this happen oftentimes, and you see this happen with people, and you see this also happen with individuals who are part of local churches. The spirit just comes in and it just wreaks havoc on the church. But the church continues to exist. Well, in this moment, this spirit had no problem join, joining their prayer meeting or being involved with prayer. And you see this what happens. People are very religious, very pious, but then the more and more you mature and you become sensitive with God, you're able to discern whether somebody's operating within the right spirit or they've allowed a, an unclean spirit to get in and to begin to flow and function. This person was, a, was attracted to prayer, and this prayer, we have to see, it'll impact churches and individuals. Number two, watch this here. It says in verse 17. Well, actually, let's stay with verse 16. It says, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Now this is also uh, interesting because fortune telling we know is, is such a money maker for people because people want to know their future. They want to know what's going on. It's a false form of prophetic ministry and, uh, and is done by obviously a, a bad spirit, but the person gains attention and attracts attention by telling something or telling people something about their future, something that is going to happen. But typically, when you get around people or you understand this particular spirit, they always tell people what they want to hear. These fortune tellers. They tell people what they want to hear, and they will be promoted. Now watch this, y'all. They will be promoted because they tell people what they want to hear. And you have to understand this about that python spirit that comes in to displace and replace. It's going to come in, 
It's attracted to prayer, attracted to those things to try to suck the life out, displace and replace the Holy Spirit with a bad spirit, and then start telling people what they, oh, you know, you know, this is your future, this is, and the devil starts using the individuals like this to pre- preach a message or to say things that feel good from a natural standpoint, but are not effective and are not truth and founded upon the truth. And so people buy into this stuff and then become attracted to those individuals because they always know that they're going to get a good word from that person. It's dangerous. It's dangerous, y'all. Because these fortune tellers or diviners or python spirits, they attract people by continually and consistently getting them to be connected to them by telling them what they want to hear. And this is what happens in the church. People have got away from just wanting to know the truth, loving the truth, having a passion for the truth, and desiring the truth. And because a person did not receive the the love of the truth, God will send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. And so we have to have a love for the truth. But these fortune tellers make money by telling people what they want to hear and getting them connected with it. And they're becoming more and more popular, not just in the secular, but saints in the church. They're becoming popular in the church. I don't want to go to that church because, you know, they they, they don't make me feel good. Well, sometimes the truth doesn't make you feel good. It makes you feel bad, and then later on you start feeling good. And what we want to do is be a church that clearly understands the balance. Now, there's a lot of things that God's going to preach to us that make us feel good. But then there's times when we know we need to hear something that's going to challenge us. And it's going to set us straight. But if we're in a position where we're just always drawn to something that's going to make us feel good or always concerning our future, saying, stop chasing prophecies. If God has something to say, he knows where to find you. You don't always have to go chasing after it. God will come after you and tell you what thus says the Lord. So we have to get out of this because I've seen many people in their desperation to know something about their future, they get caught up with the wrong spirit and the bad spirit, and the next you know they're connected to this person. Well, that's my prophet. Well, you saying you you got your mind on the wrong thing. And that's my, you you just got to understand, the the, the kingdom doesn't work like that. God knows how to talk to you, and he knows where to find you. You don't have to go to every prophetic conference. You don't have to travel all over. You don't have to do all these things. Now, if God's telling you to do something, fine, but I'm seeing a lot of people that are driven and being moved out of their desperation and then they start eating on the wrong information from the wrong people and then the next thing you know the spirit of divination comes in and they don't even know it because they're still religious but it's a bad spirit can i preach it this morning y'all can i preach it this morning and that's what happens now you got to see and i have to see that when we start desiring he said time will come when men will not They will not tolerate or put up with the truth. They'll heat for themselves teachers having itchy ears. People are stopped wanting the truth. They just start drawing for themselves teachers because they have itchy ears. I got to find somebody that's going to tell me what I want to hear. Well, this is what this fortune teller was doing. She was making a lot of money for her and for her, her masters by just releasing false oracles. And she was trying to connect herself with the men of God, with the people of God. She was trying to get, and this is what's happened. That spirit is God in the church. I'm not, I'm not saying, saints, listen, I'm not saying it's trying to get in the church. I'm saying that this demon has got into churches all over the world. And releasing false prophetic ministry and releasing things that that and to the point where people that are doing this stuff they are becoming very very profitable and fashionable and then people aren't able to discern it but watch what happens saints we got to be able to see this 
Because these false prophets just tell people what they want to what they want to hear. But look at verse seventeen. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, "These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation." And thus she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out, he says, that very hour. Now this is also very important because this spirit, when it comes along, it will tell you the truth. But it's the wrong spirit. And generally, people who have this kind of spirit within them will have us, they'll understand and have a, a sliver of truth there, but it's the wrong spirit. And we have to see this, saints. Now, listen to me. Flattery is such a dangerous weapon of the enemy. Flattery. People try to gain advantage in your life through flattery. And we have to be able to see it. And spirits try to gain advantage in your life through flattery. And I say this to you all the time. We thank God for compliments, and I thank God for people that are a blessing. It's, but you cannot allow stuff like that to feed you. If you allow it to feed you, you're going to be on the road of destruction because the devil will come along, and he'll tell you some very nice, juicy things to flatter you to gain advantage, the Bible says. And so in this passage of scripture, you see she's saying the right thing, but she has the wrong spirit. And we have to try the spirits to see whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone in, out into the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, this is what he says. And so she's saying the right thing, she has a bad spirit. But Paul, it says here in verse 18, he was greatly annoyed Paul's response is how we defeat it it says right here in verse 18 and this she did many days but Paul greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit saints we have to be able to discern from within when we're dealing with this python spirit we have to be able to discern we want to be able to distinguish the difference between a uh, the holy spirit and unclean spirits we have to be able to discern. And God gives us an unction so that we can function. He says, and you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. There is an inner witness that God begins to give us, that he gives us, so that we're able to discern truth. And it is something that God deposits and causes to rest within us so that we're, it's, it helps us to discern. It is a discerner. Within, you begin to get this unction, like, mm, something's not right. Something's not right. The person is saying the right thing, but something isn't right. And he says here that he was annoyed. Oh, I love it. His spirit is so connected to the Holy Spirit, and he's yielding in such a way that he's able to discern, and there's an annoyance, or this, also this word annoy, it means to be grieved. I never forget, years ago, um, and this happens to me all the time, but I can never forget one powerful moment I had years ago when I got invited to preach at a church in, Sacram in uh, San Francisco. And I, and I was hesitant about ex accepting the offer to preach at this church, uh, and so I was thinking about it, praying about it, and I said, you know, um, as I'm going through this process of determining whether I should speak at this church. I'm going to go, I want to go, I want to, I'm going to be in the area. I'm going to go see this church. So I said, I told the pastor, I said, I said, I want to come over to your church and meet with you. He's like, okay, okay, because I didn't know him. And so one of the things that happened, it was an amazing thing. I got over there, and when I, I went into the doors of the church, I went into the doors of the church, and I started feeling like a little uncomfortable. But then when I walked into the sanctuary, I had this grief come over my spirit that was so bad. I'll never forget it. I, I, and there was like a, like he just said, there was an annoyance within my spirit. Like something's not right. Something's not right. And I just walked in the sanctuary. 
Something's not right. Something's not right. And make a long story short, I told him that. I told him. Something's, I, says, I said, man, I, I'm not supposed to speak here. Something's going on. So make a long story short, I did not speak at the church. I told him very clearly. I just walked in there, there was a, and there was just a, my spirit from within was just annoyed, and there was a grief that came over me. I was very grieved. And so I told him, and then I'm not going to get into the depths of it, saints, but the things that I heard afterwards to this day still blows my mind, the goodness of God, to give you insight in, if you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit of what's going on around you, even though it may be Christian or even though somebody's speaking good or they're popular or this, but your spirit is going to help you to bear witness he said, you have an unction, but most people, they just override that. They don't even care. They get an invitation, and they don't even pray and ask God, should they do it? They don't go through any kind of process or, what, or relationships or meeting people. Or You have to make sure, and I have to make sure, that we're constantly being sensitive about stuff because many bad spirits are operating, and people, even churchiness, I don't just listen to everything. I don't just listen to every preacher, and I don't just listen to every news station because those spirits are operating in the news media too. And so you have to be very sensitive about your soul and about your spirit, and don't just ingest everything because many false prophets have gone out, and these false prophets aren't just in the church. They're also in the secular and you have to be able to see that's a python spirit trying to stop the movement of God in my life and to suck God out and then cause that person to be a voice into my life. Don't allow everybody to be a voice in your life. But he was annoyed because he's a man of God and his spirit, the unction was there to help him to discern it and we need this back in the church. We need the Spirit of God to come upon us. We need the power of God to rest within us to help us to have an unction so when we're listening to stuff and hearing things in the church and outside of the church, we're able to discern that's a python spirit. That's an evil spirit. I'm not listening to that. And he was annoyed. His spirit got annoyed and agitated. And this is what happens, saints. Sometimes the annoyance that you feel is not you. It's the Holy Spirit within you that's grieved. And when I walked into that church, that's what I felt. I felt the grief of God. Like, this isn't, this is, something's bad here. And I told him, you got to get something right here at your church. But look what happens next. He says in verse 18, And this she did many days, but Paul greatly annoyed turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her, and he came out that very hour. The thing that we have to do, saints, and I love what he does, and this is, this is important. We have to deal with the source. The source was the spirit. He was annoyed, which helped him to defeat the spirit. He was able to see it and discern it, Number two, he dealt with the source, which was the spirit. He did not condemn the person. And this is what happens for a lot of people. We cannot fight by operating in the flesh. You don't win by operating in this flesh. You win by operating in the spirit. So he was able to defeat this spirit because he understood he was dealing with a spirit and not with the, with the young lady. She was just an instrument that the devil was using, but Paul, I love it, he looked and he said to the Spirit, I command you. And so for all of us here is we have to understand that if we're going to win against these demons, that we have to fight a spiritual battle and understand we're not dealing with people. And so it's not just people, saints, but what we do is we get in the flesh and we start hating people when it's not the person. The devil is using the person for whatever reason, and I don't know how it happened, in every, people, in every person's life, they've given access to this bad spirit. And so 
the person is just being used as a tool. But what people will do in the church and out of the church is they'll just start hating the person. But it's not just the person. It's not the person. It's the demon. Get the demon out and you'll just continue to love the person. But this is what happens within the church, saints, is we get in the flesh and we stop dealing with the source and we start chopping at the leaves and we never get to the root. And so Apostle Paul was able to look at this situation. He was greatly annoyed and he said to the spirit, he didn't talk to the young lady. He said to the spirit, I command you to come out. And this is what we got to do. We got as a church community, we got to get ourselves to a place where we're fighting the right fight and we understand who we're dealing with from a spiritual standpoint when the devil tries to come into our churches, in our marriage, in our home, in our family, dealing with our kids, then all these things. You're dealing with your kids, your kids are rebellion, uh, are rebellious or stuff is going on. Start dealing with the spirits. Start rebuking those demons. If you're dealing with stuff in your house, get these demons out of your house. And whoever is opening the door for spirits to come in, bad spirits, you need to tell them, hey, this, we need to get these demons out of our house because they're trying to tear up our marriage, tear up our finances, tear up our lives, tear up our peace, and all these things. But people don't address that. They just continually just dealing with the person. Instead of stopping and saying, wait a minute, this isn't just the person. The devil may be using this person, but I got to get to the root of this. And this is what Paul did. He looked and he said to the spirit. And we as saints of God got to start lifting up our eyes, even from a church standpoint. If you have problems in the church. If you have problems in the church, it's not just natural. Sometimes it's, it's spiritual saints more times than you think. Somebody has let the devil in. Jesus, in his own ministry, he understood that when he was dealing with Judas, that he wasn't just dealing with Judas, but that Satan had entered his heart. So Jesus wasn't tripping off Judas. He said, I know who's behind all of this. The devil has got into you. Have not I chosen all of you, and one of you is a devil? One of you has allowed the devil to get into his heart so that now this has happened. And that's what happens, saints. And we have to be able to see that and not allow these spirits to come in and suck and constrict and suck the life of God's spirit in the church to suck it up. We cannot allow it to happen. We always have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, but we have to stay in the flesh. Stop getting mad at people. Forgive people. People are going to hurt you. Forgive them, just like you hurt people. Forgive them and keep it moving and realizing that they're not your enemy. The enemy is the demons that is trying to use these people as an instrument in your life. Well, this is what happens. Since Paul was able to see it. But the church doesn't see We just start hating people. I hate that person. I don't like her. I don't like him. He's this. She's that. And then it just becomes a mess. And we have to make sure even during a time like this, we have to be sensitive. Look what he says here. He says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. The last thing we see Paul doing here to defeat this spirit we see number one, he's able to discern it. Number two, he's dealing with the source. And then number three, he's walking in his authority. One of the things that we have to understand is the power of the name of Jesus. I mean, we, we, we get so caught up in, in all this stuff. Man, do you know how much authority and power there is in that? Ooh, I just feel this right now. Do you know how much power there is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Do you, demons tremble at the name of Jesus that you have been authorized as a saint of God and you have the Holy Spirit in your life, that when you tell these demons that they have to respond to you as you walk in the authority that God has given you. And so there's so much access to greatness and the power of God and the things of God when we learn how to use the name of Jesus like a hammer on the head of these demons that come in to destroy your life. But what happens for a lot of people, they don't value the name of Jesus or the name of Jesus doesn't work when they're trying to use the name of Jesus because they're allowing the devil to convince them that the, that the name doesn't work. 
So they're not using his name in authority and in faith and in power and in obedience to him. And so they're saying, well, I don't see any results. Well, you need to align yourself with God, release your faith, and understand that when Paul said in the name of Jesus to come out, that demon came out because there was so much authority on his life and so much belief in the name of Jesus. You as a Christian, it is your covenant right to use his name. You are the bride of Christ. And you have access to his name, to use his name as an instrument to glorify him and to push back the powers of darkness. And it's something that we have to get back to. Saints, let me say this to y'all. We got to stop trying to counsel demons out of people. You got to cast them out. That's how they come out. They come out by you casting them out in the power of the name of Jesus. You can have as much counseling as you want, and everybody needs a little bit of counseling in your life, but sometimes you gotta be able to stop and say, this ain't a counseling issue. We gotta rebuke this demon that's trying to construct and constrict all the things that God's trying to do in our, can I have an amen, y'all, that the devil's trying to do in our lives. We get so passive, and we think everything is just counseling, 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 counseling. Well, how much are you going to sit there and just listen to everybody at some point in time we got to look and say devil come out we bind you in the name of Jesus you're not tearing up my finances you're not tearing up my marriage you're not tearing up my kids you're not tearing up my body you're not tearing up my physical you're not tearing me up you're not tearing me down I'm casting you out in the well this is what Paul did he walked in his authority he walked in his authority and he's and he, this wasn't a five-hour deal y'all he spoke to those demons. That demon came out that hour. And it's important that we realize and walk in this. But we get in the church and we become so secular, secularized in the church. We allow secular humanism to just so creep into the church that these demons are having a field day because they, don't, they know nobody's going to cast us out around here. I'm going to take over the worship team. I'm going to take over the preaching at the church. I'm going to take over their marriage. I'm going to take over. And they're going to think that it's the Holy Spirit working, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It's the spirit of divination, a python spirit. And I suck the Holy Spirit out. And now we got a big church, but we don't talk about the Holy Spirit's not moving. They got a, they got a, yeah, they got a marriage, but I sucked up everything. All the Holy Spirit is out of their marriage, and then I'm just having them survive. They're in survival mode. They're not thriving because the Holy Spirit, I got him out. I constricted. I constricted, and I just pushed, and I just squeezed, and I just squeezed, so they just gave in to what I want to do, and then the Holy Spirit is saying, well, I, I want to I help you, but I can't because you, you're choosing that spirit instead of me. You're choosing that prophetic, you're choosing that voice which isn't prophetic, it's divination that's just telling you everything you want to hear and it's not, it's not me. You're choosing that message that just tickles your ears and just tickles your ears and just tries to comfort you just so you just, you don't have any responsibility, you don't have to take any responsibility for your life and your actions and I'm just, and this, so now I can't even, the Holy Spirit can't move because now I like this other message. And just the devil just constricts and constricts. And you know, you can have worship, but don't, don't, you get two songs, you get two songs, and you got two, 10 minutes. And after that 10 minutes, then it's over. You can't let the Holy Spirit move. Don't let the Holy Spirit move. We don't want that. We just want to have some songs, sing some songs. And then everybody that's in the church, you don't, you guys don't sing. You just let them sing because they're going to sing for you. That's what the python spirit does. And then people come to church and they just sit there and it's entertainment. Oh, this is a good song. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, they did a great job today. They did a great job. But did you sing? No. I don't sing. They sing for me. Did you lift your hands? Did you surrender to God? Did you feel the Holy Spirit? What, what do you mean? Yeah, I felt the Holy Spirit. I just, don't get involved, don't get in, don't sing, don't, I'm not singing. They can sing, and you sit there, I see it. People sit there. God's moving. Oh, yeah, so, praise the Lord. Don't worship. Don't worship, let them do it. 
Don't pray. Let them do it. Don't seek God. Let them do it. And the Holy, and then the, the Python spirit just sitting there. Say, yeah, I got him. I sucked. I squeezed on him. I put pressure on the pastor. I put pressure on the pastor because he's so insecure that he didn't want to ruffle any feathers. He don't want to tell anybody. He don't want to tell anybody, make anybody feel bad. I got him now. He won't even preach the truth of God's word. He'll just say what's nice and pleasant and just tell everybody everything they want to hear. And, and he'll just, now watch this, y'all. He'll just, whatever even is the current event of the day, he'll just preach the current event Christianity. He's not going to preach the word that comes from God, that he got from God. It's just what's popular, what's trendy. What's trendy? And so now the message is going forth. It's real trendy, but, it, but did it, was it, I got before God, I prayed, I sought the Lord, I said, God, what do you want me to say? And then I'm going to just say whatever you want to say. There's no more of that. Because the spirit, the, 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 the divination, that spirit, the python spirit comes in and it sucks out the Holy Spirit. And now message is going forth, but it's not breathed on by the Holy Spirit. It's what's on the news? What's happening? Not what is thus says the Lord. And you see it. And saints, we have to get back to a place in our lives where we walk in the authority that God has given us so that we start to challenge that which we see and then we win because we're, because we're walking in faith and we're trusting in the power of the name of Jesus and people are truly getting free and getting the liberty that they have in Christ and the Holy Spirit is coming in and now there's inspiration that comes from the Holy Spirit and the power of God that comes from the Holy Spirit and then the Spirit of God begins to move and then when you begin to communicate or prophesy, it is the word of the Lord. It is what thus says the Lord, and you become free from having to be um, accepted by man because you have been united together with Christ, and now the Holy Spirit is moving in your life, and there's a freedom there. And what happens for us as saints of God is we've got to get this spirit out of our lives. We've got to get this python spirit religious spirit out of our marriages out of our homes out of our churches we have to get them out and we have to drive them out and to do it with authority and so father this morning in the name of jesus we come before you and we thank you for giving us insight into this this python spirit that seeks to to constrict the moving of the holy spirit that seeks to stop the power of God and, and seeks to displace and replace the Holy Spirit with a bad spirit in our lives, in our churches, in our marriages, in our families. And Father, we thank you that you've given us authority to, tr to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil and by any means shall nothing hurt us. Father, in Jesus' name, even as the devil is releasing false prophetics, releasing this divining voice through all media, television, radio, social media, the voice of the devil is going forth. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke that foul spirit. And we declare that we will not yield to the pressure and the, and the, the life-sucking influences of that python spirit that is constricting the moving of the Holy Spirit. Today, we bind that spirit and we command you to come out of our lives, come out of our minds, come out of our hearts, come out of our churches, come out of our schools, come out of our communities, come out, come out, come out. We bind you in the name of Jesus and we declare that we have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we take authority over the spirits of witchcraft, soothsayers, divination, and we serve notice that we will not allow you to constrict the Holy Spirit in our lives and to displace and replace Him. 
And Father, we call for the truth of your word. We call for the spirit of truth. Come on, y'all. We call for the spirit of truth. We say, even so, spirit of truth, have your way in our lives. Have your way in our minds. Have your way in our emotions. Have your way in our thoughts. Help us to discern. Help us to discern the difference between clean and unclean. Hallelujah. We praise you and we ask you, God, to give, to, to resurrect our unction, the unction of the Holy Spirit. We ask it to be resurrected in our lives so we're able to be grieved. We're able to be annoyed when, we hit, when we're around bad spirits that try to stop the move of God in our lives. Paul was greatly annoyed in his spirit. He was greatly annoyed and he said to the Spirit, Father, help us to discern from within what we are dealing with when we're watching the news, when we're watching TV, when we're dealing with people on our jobs, when we're dealing with people in the church, that, we're, that the unction to function is healthy within us. And Father, I pray that you would continue to give this church more authority and more power and spiritual authority as we continue to honor you that you would just continue to drench our church in authority that as we speak to these demons these demons come out in the name of Jesus that there would be a mantle of just deliverance that will continue just to rest over this house that when we speak to demons they come out because of the power of the name of Jesus Father, not only just in our churches, but for every person under the sound of my voice, that there would be a mantle of authority that would come upon them so that in their home, that they would drive demons out of their home that have entered in and are trying to destroy their lives and to destroy their health and their marriages and their family, their children, that we would rebuke demons that are trying to bring destruction. And Father, I pray for a fresh mantle of authority to be released over this house. That our church would continue to be known as a house of deliverance. That Lord, we would be deliverance would come to our church in even greater measure. Oh, I just see that right now. And the Lord says that in this hour, I am releasing a fresh anointing and I am releasing a mantle the Lord says that there is a strength that is coming that will begin to spring up from within. And the Lord says that I will begin to challenge on a day-to-day -day basis the mindsets that have been created and those things that have brought destruction to my people. The Lord says in this hour I am removing the veil and I am giving clarity of vision and of thought. And the Lord said that there shall be a peace that shall come to you. But before there will be peace, the Lord says there will be war. The Lord says that I will cause you to fight in the spirit. And the Lord says you will win. And not only will you win for your generation, but the Lord says for generations to come, you will set the stage for that which I am doing in and through this house. And the Lord says that even as I begin to release my grace and my strength and my power, understand that deliverance will be the order of the day, but there will also be peace. And the Lord says, trust me, as I begin to cause your name to be known, do not shy away from that which I am doing. The Lord says, but your name will be known because my name is known upon you and in you. And the Lord says that even as I cause your name to be known, that I will position you and divinely place you in positions where your impact will even be greater. The Lord says greater and greater and greater. The Lord says that in this hour I'm extending your borders and I am causing you to advance in my kingdom. And you will be raised up. You will not be shut down. And the Lord says that even in this hour, trust me, Trust me as I lead you into victory, says the Lord. God, we thank you this morning. And we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Even so, let it be unto us, Lord. Come on, you that are watching right now, lift up your hands. 
and say, God, be it unto me. I want more spiritual authority and power. I want more spiritual authority and power. I will use your name, Lord. I will use your name to cast out demons and every spirit that tries to stop the pneuma of God from being released. We take authority over and we give you praise. My God, God is moving, y'all. God is moving. God is moving. You don't let, you don't let that python spirit suck the pneuma of God out of your life. See it, discern it, and call it out for what it is. That's what the man of God did. And that's what God is calling us to do. We will have and we will continue to have the true prophetic flow. The Holy Spirit will not be displaced and replaced in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next week. God is good, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life, and may His Word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.